subscribe. What's up, guys? If you got the new um, Premiere 2020 and you want to check out the auto reframe, so it's a really cool tool and we'll jump right into the computer pretty soon but I just wanted to warn you about a couple things you may not have known if you're gonna use it it's not a solve-all for what you might use it for it is gonna um, depend on the clips so um, let's jump into the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about alright so here we go um, I opened 2020 obviously you're gonna have it in your setup menu startup menu and Here's a clip I just took of my girlfriend. So here's the clip. It's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And just her walking down the hallway. All right. So in order to bring that, um, you click that, uh, here's the sequence, click it auto reframe sequence all right it gives you the option to square one by one vertical four or five uh, vertical 916 all right and then all you have to do vertical 916 will do and I think I already did it but we'll create it and in your effects controls you have it auto reframe and it's gonna do it it's pretty quick and now I have the 916 sequence and it tracks her motion really well um, follow her down the hallway all right and that works for the and that works for all of them so I have uh, 9 by 16 I have 1 by 1 there you go 1 by 1 and the original 16 by 9 all right boom here's the problem so that's how you do it okay and it does work very well as we just saw it follows your motion of the pretty lady um, oops follows your motion really well exactly what you'd want alright so the issue if you're doing an edit let's say that you for business or friends or whoever you're doing it for and here's the clip I have of that so on the sequence this is what I'm gonna show you so on this sequence I dragged and dropped a new file this sequence is Racine Brewing Company I did a little video for them for them and um, it's a finished product so I would actually send I actually already sent this out they said I could use it for this type of tutorial um, let's say I wanted that to be one by one alright so I'll get rid of the Bailey one and now we just have our Racine Brewing and it's still called the name is still Bailey motion track but whatever um, auto reframe this sequence all right let's do square and I don't want uh, this will replace your current motion adjustments nest clips this will keep motion to move transitions so I don't have any transitions we'll create there um, and it's doing its thing it's done already which is sweet here's the problem you don't get your motion graphics in that type of reframe it doesn't matter if you did which, which transition and then here um, it doesn't it didn't catch the motion as, as the framing that I shot it in okay so like this pans fine right here this pan um, let me mute this track here because I don't know if you guys can hear that or not so obviously Racine Brewing that's cut off so you don't want that you don't you can't have cut off footage in <laughs> the video all right also it kind of speeds speeds up this here boom into the next uh, into our next section and I I went that, that's a slow shot so I don't want that transition that's stupid also this that framing look at that that is not a pan that I wanted as part of the video um, so it's something that you really have to pay attention to if you're gonna auto reframe like that it's moving it around um, it's like here it works fine he's centered it tracks him in that one by one square and here it's gonna be alright because I followed him up the stairs pouring is okay that's fine it did its job there it's making a good cut on that segment but like 
what's this? I didn't pan back to the left, but it does. And it, it automatically changes it. Um, it's kind of dookie, honestly. I don't, I wouldn't, I would never give this one by one cut to my client. Um, I guess if it did it and looks good to you, then it's fine, but it's not to me. So it's just make sure the cuts that you're using and obviously motion graphics out don't have those on the screen um, when you resize. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a lot of keyframing going back and uh, trying to fix it. And it would have just been easier to resize it yourself to begin with manually. Um, like Bailey's clip, that looks fine resized because it just literally is her that it's tracking and you'll be all right that way but honestly if you're gonna do motion track on premiere 2020 do it to each clip and then maybe put the edit together unless it's all just following somebody if it's just transitions no actual like words on the screen no um no uh motion graphic uh templates that have words in them um no titles stuff like that if you have titles it's gonna it's gonna change the size of that and you'll have to go back in like you can't just throw that and it, it didn't resize it resized the video not what's overlaid on it um if that makes sense so you could kind of see um i'll play this uh that's how it's supposed to look and uh, I have a voiceover on this one that a buddy did for me. But that's the shots. So you can see there's a total difference between that and... Uh, well, that looks like... You know what? The one by one. Here we go. Um, where is it? Of course... I did it four times so like obviously that's not usable that kind of is that kind of is but it's kind of wobbling around trying to f figure it out but like that pour like from from his pour to that's uh original like that framing's good there <laughs> and there but not in in that other one so just a word to the wise on, on using the auto frame, auto reframe sequencing in Premiere 2020. Um, it's not perfect, but it'll work in, in specific categories like trying to track my girlfriend walking in the house or a skateboard or whatever. Um, just be aware of it. Uh, hopefully this video helped you a little bit. Let me know in the comments what you think of my assessment. And uh, subscribe, as always, to the channel. I could use it. Um, thanks for watching. Luke out. Luke deuces. Catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.